Welcome to the Humanity Leadership Podcast. My name is David Wheatley. We're here to talk leadership in small, bite-sized and practical chunks. Enjoy. So this episode is another of our first Friday episodes. And the first Friday of every month, Humanity hosts a work session at noon Eastern until about 10 minutes to one. And uh, it's very engaging. It's We talk about a different leadership topic, and you can find out more about them on our website. And this one is talking about performance reviews and how we shouldn't do them. So why this subject, performance reviews, let's not do them. And before I start, the reason I, I've got Kevin here is really uh, to pipe in when I say something that's completely wrong. Um, he's our go-to HR expert, and I thought, I can't talk about performance reviews and how we shouldn't be doing them unless Kevin's here to save my butt and uh, tell me that I've said something that's inappropriate. Um, but in prepping for it, we realized that we're more aligned than not. And the challenge that I have with performance reviews is that the end of the year, this time of year, often means that we're spending chunks of time doing our annual performance reviews, checking boxes, filling out forms for people. And most managers that I work with when they have that environment, and some of you commented on this in the chat box to hate that time of year, uh, and reviews that are done that way, if done poorly, can even be a negative uh, morale indicator for employees because it doesn't matter what their performance level is, it's just an annual thing that we have to go through in order to meet a criteria rather than it being useful. And so you're spending, managers are spending a lot of time creating something of little value. Any annual review even is, is usually focused on the last few weeks or months because unless you take great notes, you can't remember what happened in January. So you're just perf analyzing somebody's performance based on November and December. So it feels like a purposeless drain of time and effort. So that's why I say, let's stop doing them. And so as I say, Kevin's here to help me just make sure I don't get myself into trouble. So if we're all too busy to be wasting time, but people need performance feedback and development, but the traditional ways that we've done that don't work. So I wanna propose a few alternative thoughts to you uh, this afternoon. So I think it's useful to measure, develop, and grow people with an accountability. So I'm not talking about throwing out any kind of accountability, but I read something recently that, uh, and I'll put an article in the chat box for you shortly, that change from smart goals, which many of us will remember and know, to the idea of fast goals. And there were some things about fast goals that I really appreciated that, uh, that helped generate this kind of conversation. Because fast goals are frequent discussions, ambitious scope, specific milestones, and transparency. And if I just go back to those, the frequent discussions are that our goals should be embedded in ongoing discussions to review progress. Uh, to allocate, re allocate resources, to prioritize, and to provide feedback. It's a frequent discussion. And that's the piece that really attracted my attention, is that we should be having these. If you look at OKRs, which is something that Google uses a lot, it's about frequent discussions to some objective. And that second letter, the ambitious, is that the objective should be difficult, but not impossible to, to achieve. And I was having this conversation with uh, Mike, actually, in one of the sessions here yesterday, about we have to make sure that if we're uh, saying let's reach for the, the stars, then we measure people on that, that we're reaching for the stars. And we don't say let's, let's aim for the stars and then measure you when you don't reach, this, reach as far as we expected you to. Um, but let's make sure they're ambitious and they're achievable. And then specific, let's make sure they translate into concrete metrics. And I was having another conversation this week about metricizing things. And the challenge of, of establishing concrete metrics is quite often the onus is on the leader to spend the time thinking about how they're going to measure whatever it is they're asking people to perform at. So spending some time up front to think about it, how will I measure it? How will I test that? So I can then apply the metrics up front to what's expected. And then the idea of transparency and um, my organization, Humanity, is 100% transparent. You come in as an intern, within a few weeks, you'll know how much I earn and everybody else um, because we believe that transparency is good. Not everybody can go there, 
But if we make our goals and performance transparent, what you start to see is not only some peer pressure creating improvement, but employees can see how their activities are supporting each other and the overall goal. So this idea of moving to more fast goals rather than smart ones, which then measure people on a more regular, either every two weeks or every month basis, so that we're tracking performance in the right way. The other thing I find with performance reviews is they only take into account part of an, a person's role, part of their work. And I like to divide the people's work into two. So there's the everyday roles and responsibilities that you take care of. And then there's the goals, which are going to be the things you're going to focus on this year to achieve. So if we break that down, the goals are usually only about 20% of our time, as the other 80% is taken with running the business, doing the job, answering the phone, doing emails, all that kind of stuff, which you're not necessarily going to measure. But you can apply these fast goals to, to three things there. One is, are we meeting our roles and responsibilities? What I expect you to take care of. The second one is, are we expanding their part of the work and the business? That's the goal that I expect you to grow, develop, and achieve. And then the third thing is, are we demonstrating the right behaviors, how I expect you to operate, which is so often missed when we're doing performance reviews that we're because the behaviors are what we really want. They will turn into the results at the end of the day. So this idea of short, frequent conversations to track progress and then adjust accordingly so that you're never able to get too far away from where you need to be. We can course correct on a regular basis. So, and then at the end of the year, there should be no surprises. We've known all year long what direction we were going in and how we were doing. Even if we have these cut short, uh, frequent conversations, what I recommend is we summarize them in a quick email. Then we have a record of the progress and the obstacles through the year. Kevin has a different perspective on this. I do. And actually, um, uh, Dr. McKee jumped in here and said that she likes one using OneNote for that tool. And what I like to do is have a shared document with the employee where we're talking about things as we go and they can add to it as well as I can. And then we have that ongoing conversation and we have it documented for where are we heading? How are we doing? And what does that look like? Cool. Yeah. And so either way, we're just trying to track this on an ongoing way rather than that big annual lift of trying to remember what everybody did. So, and even when I suggest these things, people say, if goals are met early, what do we do then? Well, we establish new ones and continue to stretch and grow because if we achieved it, it was obviously more than achievable, but let's expand that a little bit. Let's not punish people, but let's keep expanding. But this really takes effort up front to ensure alignment and then the discipline to track, but it saves that feeling of wasted time that we often associate with annual performance reviews. Kevin, what, what else would you add? Well, I think what I'd like to share is really that when David first called me about this topic, I basically said, I'm a fan of performance reviews when they're done well. But if they're not done well, that's when, I, that's my caveat, is if you don't do them well, don't bother, right? But if they're done well, that's a different thing. So I think what I'd like to add are just a few of the ways that it goes south. And that is, you know, providing either the, you know, the aversion to providing negative feedback or hyper-focus on that negative feedback, right? Either way, where you're focusing that conversation on one aspect of the, uh, the, that individual's performance. And then the other piece of that is being inaccurate, right? So if we don't really know where an employee is or we don't want to give that feedback or we're giving them a higher perhaps maybe a higher score than they've earned because we want them to get a bigger increase this year, that kind of thing, um, people know where they're at. If you've been doing a good job having those ongoing conversations, people should know where they're at. And when, so when you're not honest in those conversations, that's demoralizing um, and frustrating for the employees. So there's that. And then the other piece is when you're doing specific scoring, you know, we've had situations where you get into a debate on a five-point scale where you've given an employee a 4.4, but they think they should be at a 4.6, both of which are wonderful scores, but you're having this debate or argument, in worst case, over that 0.2 difference, and you lose the spirit and the intent of that review process. 
And then the last one in my book is the, and my HR friends on this are going to shake their heads on this one. And that is the, everyone meets expectations always until we're ready to fire that person. And then we're like, they've been terrible forever. Even though I've rated them meets expectations for the last five years, right? Now I want to fire them and they've never been acceptable. And so when you have those scenarios, that's a really high hurdle to take any kind of uh, any action with when you've got this documented track record of meets expectations every single year. And all of those complement the idea of let's set some expectations and then track them more frequently. Because the biggest bane is when we don't track them frequently and we just look at the end of the year. And to your point on negative feedback, if uh, folks haven't found the Humanity Leadership Podcast yet, episode 49 talks about how to give uh, feedback to folks. Um, and we use a, uh, a simple model. It's called Feed Need, Seed Weed. And so take a look at episode 49 if you're struggling with the first point that Kevin just raised. So as we send you back. So that was the first Friday for January 2023. It's uh, We've got 12 months of first Friday sessions under our belt now. And uh, there's usually somewhere between 40 and 60 people show up for those. And so they're really good interactive sessions. You get to meet some new people. And if you want to sign up, pop to humanity.com and take a look at the first Friday sessions where you can sign up to uh, come to any of them. I can also see what the subjects are coming up. That was the Humanity Leadership Podcast. My name's David Wheatley. For further information about Humanity, go to humanity.com or check out our latest book, What Great Teams Do Great, from all good bookstores. Have a good one. Stay healthy. Mm -hmm.